Hi students, this is Paul. I'm going to teach you how to install MySQL on your computer. Go to the mysql.com website, which is your official MySQL website. Uh, go to the downloads link. Scroll down and go to MySQL community downloads. And right here you've got MySQL installer for Windows. Select this. So this is your Microsoft Windows installer. Select the second option, which is an MSI installer, a full download. It will ask you to log in or create an account. Just select no thanks, just start my download. And here you can start downloading it. Okay, I've already downloaded earlier so that I can show you the installation. So we go up here to downloads and I run my installation file which is an MSI file and this begins my installation. So I select the developer default which will by default install the server, the client and some other software like the workbench where you can program uh, as a client by connecting to the server and you can also manage your server. Uh, we also have connectors, uh, special connectors which allow you to connect the f uh, uh, f through front-end applications to your MySQL backend and some documentation. Okay, now let's select next. Okay, it says the following products have failing requirements. Uh, well, these are not important installations. Excel, MySQL for Excel and for Visual Studio. So we can ignore them for now. We can check them later. Just like yes. And uh, here is your server, workbench, all the other components. Just select execute. So it starts. Uh, downloading it and installing it. Next is the workbench. That is the main tool we are going to use to connect to our server. The speed of this would depend on the speed of your computer. Next is our notifier and then is our shell. So we have installed the server, the workbench, then the notifier. Notifier allows us to activate our server or stop our server. Notifier is like a switch button. Switch on or switch off. When you switch it on, the server will be running. When you switch it off, then the server will be like uh, sleeping. You, can, you cannot connect to the server. Actually, the rest of these installations that we have over here, uh, they are not as necessary as the first three. But an aspect of what we are studying here is connecting our front-end application to our back-end application. That is why perhaps we will need ODBC. That is why perhaps we will need a Python connector. So. It's important for your future uh, topic when we study uh, connectivity, connecting a, a Java application to a MySQL or connecting a Python application to a MySQL.
Okay, as you can see, we have finished installing everything. So we select next. Now we'll go to the configuration of our server. So it asks for uh, whether you want it to be a database cluster or a standalone MySQL server. Just select a standalone MySQL server, select next. Okay, configuration type, a development computer, the port number, TCP IP, okay. Uh, open Windows firewall ports for network access. So leave these as default. Remember that your, your server and your client is on the same machine, okay. Uh, so just leave it as default and select next. Um, this is a new feature. Use strong password encryption for authentication recommended. Just leave it as default. Uh, next. Now here it asks you for a MySQL root password. Now this is very important. I give a simple password like 1, 2, 3, 4. Repeat 1, 2, 3, 4. It's not a strong password but then I'm not going to have a sensitive database or neither will you. We are just installing this so we learn MySQL. Perhaps for future use, you can create a strong password. If you want to add uh, new accounts to your MySQL, this is the place where you can do it. Okay, so the root password is given. Remember, 1234, 1234 is my root password. Then I go to next. Uh, so configure MySQL server as a Windows service. And that service is MySQL 18. So this is an important aspect. The server will run on your computer as a Windows service and this is the service name. It says start the MySQL server at system startup. The problem is every time you switch on your computer it will start this and will feed on your memory. Personally I won't select it. I don't want it to start at startup. Only when I want to run it and I'll tell you how to run it okay and run the Windows system as a standard system account or associated with another customer user just leave the default standard system account another custom user okay uh, for this we can select an existing account but just leave the service to run as a standard system account then select next Then you will get the configuration steps done by selecting execute. So it's starting to configure. There, it's running the services, and everything is done. Okay, so that configuration for MySQL server was successful. Click finish to continue. So select finish. So MySQL configuration is complete. MySQL router ready to configure. Uh, samples and examples ready to configure. Well, you may not need to do that now, but let's proceed. MySQL router configuration. Uh, you don't need to do that. Uh, we are not going to use this, uh, at least not in this course. Just select finish. Samples and examples, next. Uh, so, this is your root. Now it's going to uh, check and see whether your system is running or not. Remember your system root, what was the password? One, two, three, four. Select check. It says connection succeeded, okay? So, everything is okay. Select next. Uh, checking if there are any features installed that need configuration and running scripts. Just execute again. Okay, the installation was successful. Click finish. And, uh, click next. 
start MySQL Workbench after setup and start MySQL Shell after setup. We don't need to start the shell. Click finish. Now this is your MySQL Workbench. Okay. This is your right over here is your MySQL Notifier. Okay. Your MySQL Notifier is running. That means you can connect to your server by using MySQL Workbench. I'm going to close MySQL Workbench and open MySQL Workbench again. Okay. If I go down here, scroll down to MySQL, here is MySQL Workbench. Okay. I can just pin it to my start here. Here is my SQL Workbench. I select it. This opens my SQL Workbench. Now I want to connect to my server, which is a local instance, MySQL. Remember, we gave this ID, MySQL AT. We select it. It will ask us for a root password. Remember, the root password I gave was 1, 2, 3, 4. And then click OK. So this connects me to my server. Okay, remember, if I want to check whether my server is running, I go to my SQL notifier. Okay, so let's just go again to MySQL over here. Uh, go to MySQL notifier and create a shortcut. So this is my SQL notifier. Now, here is where we are going to run our commands. Okay. So these are my schemas and if I click on administration it will show my server status okay so these are the details of my server status and it says that my server is running on now I go my go to my schemas okay and here is where I can do my queries so already you can see I've got a series of databases here. For example, I can create a database. Create database fort, comma. Okay, I can select this and run it. When I run it, you can see the output window. It says the database fort is created. But wait a minute, I don't see it here. You have to refresh. Once you refresh, you will see forward. Now, once you create the database, doesn't mean that the database is activated. Okay? You have to activate your database. How do you activate your database? You say use forward. Okay? So now I select it and run it. So now forward is activated. Okay, so this is how your client is accessing a server. Okay, you're using a client on your MySQL uh, workbench itself. MySQL workbench can be uh, a way to access your server through this uh, query, a client which accesses your actual server. You can also uh, make changes administrative changes to your server by using this workbench okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to stop my server how by going to my remember sql notifier this is my sql notifier it says the server is running this is my sql at running what i'm going to do is i'm going to stop it there, the service is stopped. Now, when I refresh it, nothing happens. Okay? Because, you see, my server is sleeping. So, I have to wake it up. So, what I do is, I go here, I start it again.
Now that it start, I refresh it so I can see it asks me again for a password. So I enter the password one, two, three, four, click OK. Yes, I get back all my databases. And I can continue creating my database objects right over here, as we are going to do in our lab session. OK, so that's it. Uh, please do this installation uh, on your computers, uh, on your Windows computers. Those of you with a Mac system or with a Linux system, you also have an option for installation for that. You can have a look online on how to install. If you cannot, you can uh, contact me or email me and I'll tell you how to install. That's about it. Thank you very much.